What is up guys? McDouble's back again with a brand new video and today we are starting episode 1 of my journey to max level 60 to level 70 on TBC Classic. It's been a long journey. I went in with a different philosophy to have fun, to not only focus on being as fast as I can, and I can say I had a whole lot of fun guys, so I hope you guys are ready. So like I said, this video is going to be a whole journey from 60 to 70, things I encountered, what went down, a lot of PvP, and a lot of progress progress on this rogue we boosted this rogue it is a continuation of our pre-patch series so i hope you guys like that we are on the Fairlina server if you don't remember from the pre-patch series so anyway guys without further ado i hope you guys enjoy the video let's jump right in Okay guys, so the journey begins. Basically, I'm starting this journey at level 64 after doing quite a few Hellfire Ramparts, Blood Furnace, Slave Pens, and Mana Tombs runs with quite a few more to go in my future, as well as a whole lot of questing, specifically in Hellfire Peninsula. I'm not a big fan of questing outside of Hellfire Peninsula, up until I can get to at least Nagrand, and then after that, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of dungeons, okay? So, that is what it's been so far. I am honored with Cenarian Expedition, and I am honored with Thralmar. But, of course, the most important goal is just to have fun, right? So, we're going to be playing the game to have fun, and not just to reach max. But the goal is still to reach max, right? As is the intent of the game to begin with. I'm just not going to rush it, right? I'm going to PvP, I'm going to World PvP specifically. We're going to do our quest, we're going to do dungeons. Dungeons. We're gonna go for the good gear along the way probably something you're not seeing much of considering the fact that everybody is just like spell cleaving to max So I hope you guys enjoy the journey. Let's get to level 70 So we started off on a journey hit men for hire That was my guild's name and I'm still in it, but uh, it's kind of petered off It started off as a really fun concept with me and a friend where people could pay us to take out somebody on the alliance side who maybe ganked them or camped them or that they had a personal vendetta out on. And because there was so much PvP in Hellfire Peninsula when the game first came out, this was actually very easy to do. I have two situations where not only did people actually commission our guild to find two players separately of course, and kill them with proof but they paid us for it and we made a decent little chunk of gold he will be a human mage what would our okay obviously this one's on the house but like if we actually did this what would we charge It depends entirely on the difficulty of the target so what's the main thing to keep in mind with a mage uh, to fucking perma-stun him. Yeah. He's gonna blink immediately and try yeah, to run. I like am going to use cold blood on him, so, like, all we have to do is keep him perma-stun, and then I can five-point, like, murder him. Right, yeah. Alright, I'm getting words of encouragement from... What do you mean? Omoroku. He said <laughs> Zug Zug. He's not paying us, but he's paying us with the Zug Zug, if that makes sense. Wait! Oh! Him. Zap him. What the fuck? I'm out of here. Really? Polymorph. Dead. You got this, dude. GG. Nice. We didn't have to go out of our way that much. See, that's pretty fun if you think about it, because I asked that dude. I got a little information about where he could be. We went, we found the person. It actually happened. But, you know, some of these could be hard in the future if they want us to kill somebody and they're just, like, in Stormwind, you know? He said... Zug Zug. Zug Zug Dabu. So that was kill number one, and it was on the house because we were just trying to get our name out there. But for kill number two, we actually got commissioned for a pretty decent amount of money. Let me go ahead and show you guys this. Can you confirm that he's still in the zone? Yeah. Later that same evening. Oh. I found him! Are you fucking kidding? He's on me right now! On the way. Stop! 
So there you go. That was the killing of Poof Poof, or I should say the assassination of Poof Poof. You know, the guy that put out the hit order for him ended up paying us quite a lot of money. They paid it to fire in my friend, so I didn't get it on camera, but it was 55 gold. Pretty solid, if you ask me, uh, for a random assassination. I mean, he only wanted this guy killed because he, Poof Poof, killed the guy that put out the hit on him at some point, and I guess the guy couldn't get revenge. I mean, it makes sense. Poof Poof was a rogue, and that is kind of, you know, dirty, you know, when rogues go out and hunt other rogues, but it's also incredibly necessary because I think we're fully aware that most of the people that are going to get a hit put out on their name are probably going to be rogues, <laughs> so uh, it is what it is at this point. If you want to do it, we're going to be on Fair Lena, so hit us up, and for a small fee, uh, yeah, we'll take somebody out for you, and maybe we'll put it in the video, right? So one of the things I decided to do was switch to assassination, right? I want to play Mutilate, so that is the challenge. You know, this is not the best spec. In TBC, really, what you want to play is subtlety for PvP. You want to pick up that shadow step at 70. You want to, you know, grab that cold blood and just blow people up with immense amounts of CC. Alongside preparation, resetting everything, pre-med making your opener smoother, and cheat death, well, <laughs> allowing you to cheat death. And, you know, if you want to PvE, everybody knows you have to play combat. From what I've seen, the main reason to play combat is like combat potency, actually. It's the only talent that I can see that rogues get in TBC that actually allows you to generate additional energy, which is very interesting to keep in mind. Even vitality, which eventually turns into a way to increase your energy, is just a way to increase stamina and agi in TBC. So combat potency, right? You want to grab some like one each maces or something like that or swords, and then you just want to go ham spamming SS like it's that easy. Assassination's like the bastard child of TBC. It's like the only unique spec that was actually put into the game with TBC because it gives you a brand new filler spell to use with the Mutilate, and it's very difficult to use because you have to have a positional requirement for some reason in TBC. Why? Why? To use Mutilate, just like Backstab. I have to be behind my target. But the Assassination Rogue Tree is fascinating to me because it's the poison tree in every uh, way that you could put it, right? You have improved poisons so that you have an increased chance to apply your poisons. You have vile poisons, which increases the damage of your poisons and increases the damage of another brand new TBC spell that you only really would ever want to use if you were playing Mutilate, and that's Envenom. That's a pretty cool finishing move that almost replaces Eviscerate most of the time. It does damage based on the amount of stacks of deadly poison on my targets and the amount of combo points I have. The main use here is that it's gonna go through like play armor and male armor to some degree and do you know full damage to those types of targets but you know if I go assassination I keep some pretty interesting talents as well like I can have the cold blood for pretty massive burst I can have relentless strikes so my finishing moves have a hundred percent chance really to restore 25 energy assuming I use it with five combo points and the mutilate itself hits like a truck guys it really hits hard yeah it instantly attacks with both weapons for an additional 52 although with my rank it's at 105 now uh, with each weapon but the damage is increased by 50 percent against poisoned targets and it gives you two combo points and if you crit it gives you three with seal fate because this gives me an extra combo point when i crit my target now vigor is a lot weaker obviously in vanilla and tbc you know it gets better it becomes a side note type of talent later on but 10 extra energy almost makes it to where I can get off two mutilates. If I do it right with an energy tick, I can get two mutilates off immediately. And then I kind of wait a couple ticks and then get off, you know, some kind of five point if I want to blow somebody up. However, Assassination also gives me Find Weakness. It says my finishing moves increase the damage of all of my offensive abilities by 10%. This adds some merit to just throwing out a one or two combo point, let's say Slice and Dice or even a Rupture, and just getting that buff up so that I can hit harder with Envenom, Eviscerate, and Mutilate. The only thing I don't like about my current spec is I didn't go into Improved Eviscerate because I didn't realize how often I might want to use Eviscerate over the Envenom, but I think we'll be fine nonetheless with most of our points in Assassination and then some subtlety talents just to get things like dirty tricks not to be seen as much in stealth extra damage with the mutilate more combo points so that's what we're going to be playing for the rest of the video i think at least until level 70 and all of the clips you're going to see are going to be me playing mutilate rogue as opposed to subtlety rogue with the shadow step that you may have seen uh, at the very beginning of this video
And another cool thing is that I get to use daggers, right? So I end up pretty freaking sick. Uh, my gear is solid. So far, at level 65, I have Blade Fist's Breath, Hand of Justice, Long Strider's Loop, Band of the Victor, which came from PvPing day one in Hellfire Peninsula for the daily quests, right, with a 14 AP gem. Again, we're taking our time, so I hold a lot of reverence on having all of this dungeon loot and just enjoying myself. Sure Step Boots. The greens that I have are at least like solid greens. It is a boosted character. It is a continuation of my pre-patch series. But we have the Jerkin of the Untamed Spirit, the Dark Cloak of the Marsh, the Mantle of the Dusk Dweller, the Pendant of Cunning. But what I really like is the Wastewalker Shiv, which you can see is, I believe, the red one, which is pretty sick right there. Uh, and then we also just got a new dagger, uh, which is the Blade of Unquenched Thirst, which is interesting. But what I don't like about the Blade of Unquenched Thirst is that it's a faster dagger, so I'm getting less damage off on the Mutilate, because it has a lower, you know, base attack damage compared to, like, let's say, Wastewalker Shiv, which is, you know, pretty much way better in every way. But it has a pretty cool chance on hit, and it gives a pretty decent amount of raw AP, so we're trying it and hoping it just gives me more procs with my poison. Again, I'm doing this myself, uh, despite the game being figured out in everybody's minds, because i that's what I like to do. I like to learn it, play it, and enjoy it. I didn't get to play TBC as a max level character. I was a kid with TBC. I only leveled in TBC, but never got past, like, level 40. Uh, Wrath was when I really hit max multiple times on multiple characters and got into the game, and Vanilla, I was just leveling as well. I was seriously a kid that barely played the game and I would just literally purchase free trials purchase lol I would make a bunch of free trial accounts and after my 10 days I would make a new account every single time that's what I did up until basically wrath so this is fun for me because I get to play the game in a way that I never got to play it when I was like 11 there's my daily by the way so I can show you that I'm genuinely doing a lot of that but okay that was my little update for what the character is like for the rest of the video I just thought it was good to go ahead and throw it in now so what we're gonna be doing is probably a bunch of dungeons like I alluded to before a bunch of PvP because I've got to go fight people out there and just trying to get to 70 but not trying to ruin my TBC classic experience at the same time <laughs> So one of the things I went ahead and I did is I picked up first aid. The main reason I wanted it, obviously, is because rogues and TBC don't have a lot of healing, so getting the bandages is going to be a pretty sick boon to my PvP potential with this character. It's going to allow me to reset, right? Get off the blind, go for the sap, go for the bandage, go behind a pillar, go for the bandage, whatever it is. But it's going to open up niche scenarios where if I didn't have the bandage, I would lose, but because I have it, maybe I have a chance, right? Can't obviously use it if I have a dot on me or if I'm taking any kind of damage but I think it's gonna be quite good so I went ahead and I maxed it out I think I'm not gonna regret that I still have to get other professions uh, but because I'm a boosted character there's not really a lot here I'm playing on a server that my other character wasn't on so, you know we're trying to make it with a boosted rogue and just a boosted rogue I'm leaning towards jewel crafting if I'm completely honest and mining but we'll see and yeah I think what we need to do now is grind out some dungeons yeah, so in the process of grinding out mana tombs, I was able to get my consortium reputation up to, well, as high as you can get it for the dungeon that I'm in. 5,999 out of 6,000, one rep away from Honored, which is quite nice. Uh, so that's really all I needed to do mana tombs for. I did actually end up getting the Long Strider's Loop, which is a pretty nice ring that I can use in the meantime, so I do like that. But for the most part, I'm glad that I'm done with mana tombs normal um, in my mid-60s. But my DPS was pretty solid. I do notice that you really just can't beat most of the traditional DPS classes, but you know, that's to be expected. There are situations where my single target damage shines, and I'm basically always beating my friend who's playing subtlety, so I do know Mute is doing better than subtlety, but of course, we know combat is the real way to go. I noticed that, for the most part, I can get ahead in single targets of, let's say, a mage if it's just single targets. 
but warlocks, it depends, and hunters basically know it's not gonna happen. But everything else, it's pretty even. All right, set the calls is where I'm gonna be now. I think we're gonna grind it out until like 67. I think it's it's not that deep, but I do need the lower city rep. I do want to get everything as high as I possibly can while I'm leveling all of my reputations. And so, so I'm a little bit low, to be honest with you, for Sethic. We're at 66 now. We did make it to 66 by the time of this commentary where I'm doing Sethic halls. Uh, so yeah, we're doing pretty solid. 65 towards the end of 65 is where I started. And now hopefully again ending on 67. DPS is great. Single target DPS is fantastic. But two rogues is definitely not optimal. I am trying to level with my friend. We tried to go double rogue. Double rogue is pretty bad for PvE. <laughs> uh, who would have thought, right? Who would have thought having no AoE wouldn't be great? But, you know, dungeon spamming still seems to be the main way to go. Questing is definitely hell as a rogue for the most part because uh, so many things have positional requirements and so you're kind of forced to go combat or hemo and I don't want to go either of those. So, set the calls it is, man. Let's get that lower city rep up to honored. Okay, taking a quick break from the grind, actually. We are friendly with lower city, so it won't take that much longer to get to honored. But I noticed I do want to go ahead, just for my OCD's sake, and grab honored with the consortium. So, we're doing one quest. The one I'm looking at is one where we have to kill this guy, Gavaxi, Gavaxi, something like that. He's somewhere over here. You know, one thing I will say is that nothing is beating Nagrand with, you know, these enhanced graphics. This is genuinely gorgeous the grass is moving under me as i go through it oh sometimes you encounter level 70 hunters and you just have to sap them go in for that gouge go in for the cooldowns all right evasion is just gonna erase all of this person's damage and dead cold blood dead yeah have a good day dude didn't even that that was literally scuffed too. Oh, we actually did just get the Ravenclaw banned though, by the way. That's a pretty solid ring. 20 agi, 15 stam, 13 hit, and 30 attack power. We're gonna go ahead and replace the band of victor with that as soon as we can put it on at 68, but it is quite a ways away. Only five bars in the 66. So we've got a lot to do. So something I really haven't got to fight yet is a boomkin. So we're gonna go ahead and try this guy. He's fine. Oh, yeah. Into the kidney. Oh, you're dead, dude. See ya. Damn! Have a good day. All right, so, yeah, Boomkin can't really do anything. <laughs> that kind of sucked, man. Two levels on me, too. Uh, you can't even say, but he wasn't paying attention or something. The guy couldn't play his character either way. I guess he had no trinket. I can't really say much. I don't even have mine. I don't even care enough. I'd rather have the extra damage from the Hand of Justice right now. Uh, that's just me. I'm a rogue. I can get away with it. Still looking for this boss guy, by the way. It says he patrols down here, actually. And this, this is a very interesting shaped patrol route, but I'll take it. Uh, whatever the heck that's supposed to be. Uh, but yeah, let's look for this guy. I think it's an ethereal looking guy. I've seen it before. Definitely done it before. Could be that he's dead and I'm waiting for a respawn though. Let me show you guys what it's like to quest with Mutilate. I can't really get behind my target unless I go for the stun. And the energy makes it where it's kind of difficult to, you know, get more than one Mutilate off. Honestly, he died a lot faster than I expected. Um, could be a lot worse actually. I think I got kind of lucky there. Let me, let me show you guys this again, okay? It doesn't always go that smoothly. Sometimes, unfortunately, you're kind of, you know, stuck with the Sinister Strike. But you're using daggers. So I guess I could Sinister Strike like one more time to go for a longer kidney uh kind of pull some energy go for the kidney mutilate like that and now it's dead so honestly this is this is shaping up to be a lot better than i remember it a few levels ago uh to be completely honest with you this is not half bad i thought i was going to be showing you guys something a heck of a lot worse especially with the bandages now i mean i don't really have much to worry about you just groat right let's go for the three point kidney just grab the one mutilate okay now you can see where the damage it's not great sometimes so i'm stuck with the sinister strike and then i'll go for the Invenom here and we'll kill that and that's pretty solid i don't know if modes of shadow were good but i guess this could be a solid place to farm them if you needed them 34 spirit shards by the way 16 more to go we need 16 to get 50 total, and then with 50 total, we'll be able to get a brand new ring. A ring that is going to be so good that we'll keep it for the entirety of phase one. I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen for you guys. So, we have some goals. We have some things that we need to do. I'm attuned with Shadow Labyrinth. 
I've got what I need in that regard. I really like this Attune add-on. I'll put that in the description below. If you don't have it, you need it. Uh, so you can see I'm green right here for Shadow Labyrinth, so I can do that. And I will have 350 lockpicks, so I guess I never needed the key to begin with. Uh, but I need all of these other things as well. For all of them, I really I don't even have the level requirement. I could do Black Morass right now since I'm 66. Uh, we could and will most likely go ahead and do that because that looks like a long one. But I, I want to accomplish all of this. Like, all of this is very important for me to do. And I'm glad that it's, like, on this awesome little add-on that's just clear and concise and not confusing. Because, honestly, none of this looks that hard with this UI. But it sure felt way harder when I was just thinking about it in my head, right? So, very sick add-on. I highly recommend it. One thing I also really hope they do with Classic that... A lot of people might not like is that I hope they add more little vanity toys that don't really give you any advantage kind of like the path of Illidan that I have uh, for doing the boost right that just kind of gives you a green effect under your feet like a demon hunter um, you know I just don't want them to go overboard and make it like retail some things that I would like to see and really the only thing I'd like to see so it's my only example would be the fart toy from retail that's just for me dude don't ask why I just really like that one <laughs> um, <laughs> I would love to have it and I don't think it would take much away from classic so who knows maybe they will i think this was you know the path of illidan was definitely kind of like a gateway drug i <laughs> mean that's why it was added you know how much can we get away with same thing with this stupid little reawakened phase hunter mount but hey it is what it is might as well try to make the most out of it rather than just complain about it because honestly it's going to happen anyway that's just my philosophy again as long as they don't go too far i think it'll be okay Blizzard does unfortunately have a habit of going too far though, so we'll see. All right, we did it. We logged back in, as you can see from the chat. Uh, we invited somebody who was fighting it. They accepted it. We got counted for it. And now, bada bing, bada boom, we're going to turn the quest in. That is going to be honored with the consortium, which I'm so excited for, guys. I've never even tried to do any of this TBC crap before. This is so fun. I'm um, going to be honored now with three of these, Scenarian Expedition, Consortium, and Thralmar. And what's best is that besides with Thralmar, um, I haven't actually done, like, any quests for Scenarian Expedition or the Consortium. This is going to be my first one, actually, for the Consortium. In fact, what that basically means is that I have I think I've done it right. I think I'm going to be able to do all these quests at max now if I need the rep, and that's going to make it a lot easier to grind out Revered for those heroics. Alrighty, let's turn it into Zerid, man. I will definitely take it, all right? Gavaxi. We don't get anything, unfortunately, from this one, but I'll take the gun and sell it. And there we go. 11.6k XP, and like I said... Honored with the Consortium. Now, for the Consortium, there's a pretty good dagger that I can get. It's called the Guile of Karazi. It's an epic dagger, and it does require Exalted, unfortunately. But it's a level 70, 1.6 speed dagger, so that's my offhand, right? 19 Agi, 38 AP, so I have it up on the screen for you guys. It's solid. It's fine. I would like it. I would like to get, you know, all the way to Exalted quickly if I can with the Consortium. You also get, like, a bag of gems. That's pretty solid. I think it's, like, a weekly thing. And at Revered, there's also Nomad's Legacy. That could be solid in the meantime until we get something better if we don't have anything better at 70. That gives me 33 Agi, 49 Stam, and 66 AP. Again, only needing Revered for that, so this is pretty solid rep. A pretty good grind, I think, with this one for me. Perhaps the best thing, though, is this design right here. It does require Exalted for the Relentless Earthstorm Diamond, but if I do go JC, 12 Agi and 3% increased crit damage is basically perfect, so that's what I need to get. Okay, guys, I am currently in my very last run of normal Sethic Halls. Thank God. This quest is actually going to be, because I saved my quest for this moment, uh, me breaking that 5,999 out of 6,000 wall with the lower city rep there we go we are now honored and Terox legacy as well why not get the thing that sells for the most i will take it also level 67 with that so that is all three things at the end of this dungeon i have 49 shards i will have 51 and that means i will be able to go ahead and get that epic pvp ring that i won't be replacing for pvp specifically for uh the entirety of phase one i'll take it
All right, we did it. We are in Stonebreaker Hold right now, level 67, rep acquired, spirit shards done. And we're here at Spirit Sage Gartok to purchase that ring. So here we go, the Band of the Exorcist. 24 stamina, 10 hit rating, 16 crit, 11 resilience, and 32 AP. That is pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and purchase that, and there we go. We are done with Sethic Halls on normal, that's for sure. I've actually got quite a few rings on this character i've gotten pretty lucky with it band of the exorcist of course is a very good one for pvp uh, but we also have the long striders loop on right now that's quite nice i'm going to replace that at 68 though with this ravenclaw band which is just oh so slightly better and the reason i'm going to be using the ravenclaw band over the pathfinders band is because of the stamina which is going to be better for pvp i do think if i do more dungeons and of course i know i will i'll switch out probably the exorcist band for uh the pathfinders band because this is just raw damage and there's really no reason not to it's just going to be a dps increase but at least for pvp gaining all of that stamina gaining that resilience and still having a crit on there with the hit with the ap i mean it's just such a good ring i'm really happy to have it and since we're 67 actually at 66 we could have done this but we got cloak of shadows this um, this is gonna make me OP. It's a little bit different in TBC. If you played in later expansions, it's actually stronger to some degree. Uh, but only a one minute cooldown for all specs. That's really, really good in TBC. Instantly removes all existing harmful spell effects. It doesn't make me immune though. It only increases my chance to resist spells by 90% for five seconds. But the cooldown is so low, uh, it's pretty freaking sick. <laughs> Okay, so what I've been doing for like the last few hours is actually farming in the northern part of Blades Edge Mountains right here, fire elementals that drop motes of fire. And when you get 10 motes of fire, you can turn it into one primal fire. I have eight right here. This should be about 200 gold. And every single one of these elemental fragments is a testament to how many of these elementals I've killed. It looks to be about 182, and out of 182 of them, I got 80 motes of fire, or 8 primal fires. That gives it like what, like a 35 or 40% drop rate? <laughs> At least just from my very niche, small experience with it. But that's 200 gold I didn't have before, so I'll definitely take it. Okay, so get this. As a rogue, grinding where I said I was grinding, I made 60 gold from vendoring random trash that I got, 3 gold roughly, from my rune cloth and three essence of fire. And I price everything to sell, so I'm pretty confident in all of my things selling. And with the primal fire, it looks like 30 G. That seems to be what they are right now. So a little bit more than I thought. Let's just say 300 gold. So in five hours, 300 gold, that's like 60 gold an hour. That's not great. But I guess when you're a rogue and you don't have any professions yet, that's basically as good as you could hope for, man. Nonetheless, I'll definitely take it. All right, now I just have to wait for everything to sell. Several days later.
So I've been farming modes of fire for quite a bit. As you saw, I did finally drag myself along into getting the writing skill that I need at 150, which I can just automatically use with this reawakened phase hunter. And I like using this pet. I like that number one, it's unique to classic. And number two, it makes a lot of people mad. They all hate you because you're a legend. Because they hate to see it. But uh, it's just easy for me because it's cheaper. But I've been farming more moats because why not? I don't know how long I'm going to stay, but I like it. It's a solid little money-making method that you can kind of do on the side while you, you know, do something else on your other monitor. Watching a video, for example. But also, basically, the requirement to be good at this place is to hold your own in PvP. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter how good of a farmer your class is because at the end of the day, I'm going to kill you. Um, it's very simple. You can pull three of these and I can only pull one. Well, good luck. You're not going to pull any. Okay, and it goes both ways. I've been camped by level 70s and I just held my own. I stayed here. I kept farming. Um, and it, it's okay. It is what it is. But I'm also going to hold this for myself as well. Because, you know, every guy on the other faction that gets to stay here is taking my elementals. I can't prevent my own team from getting them, but I can prevent an alliance from getting them, right? So, um, definitely holding my own in that regard and just loving it. Loving the dynamic. This is super chill. I also went ahead and I got atlas loot as you can see but no i went ahead and i got attuned with black morass and uh slabs that's pretty good black morass is actually really really good because you can actually get quite a lot of keepers of time reputation from it i believe it's like roughly 1200 there's two more modes of fire by the way but 1200 basically if i get exalted with keepers of time there's a really cool dagger that i could get it's both good but also very unique i have it up on the screen for you guys now epic dagger level 70 and it's gonna lower the attack attack speed of my targets by 10%. That's actually quite interesting, not to mention the fact that it's a solid little main hand weapon for me at 1.8 speed, and it's going to give me a butt ton of agility and AP to boot. Why not? Why not go for it? It's only going to take me 20 runs, roughly, maybe a little bit more, give or take. There is something to be said about playing this game and having no cares in the world, okay? Not worrying about getting to max as quick as possible, Having the time to just grind things out and play, it really is the best. This is what TBC Classic is for. There's another mode of fire. I'll take it, by the way. All right, here's somebody. Let's uh, say all be all here. All right, we're going in. Five combo points. Let's do the rupture because I know exactly how they're going to play. Vanish into another Garot. Nice. You can see the energy problems on Mute Cloak. Are you kidding? A 10% chance, 10% chance to get the freaking poly off on the cloak. But there you go, die to the dagger, man. I'll take it, GG. That shows you cloak is both really good on a one minute cooldown, but also just so stupid sometimes. Okay guys, we're in Shatrath, and you may have noticed in some previous clips that we've been trying a spec that's not using Mutilate. We've been trying a sub spec. I am level 69 now, only one level to 70, and I'm gonna go ahead and do some sub PVP type of stuff. I know the best way to do things, I know the spec I need for arena i know all the things i have to do but i'm gonna play the things that i like to play so i've got a sub spec here obviously with the preparation with the pre-med with the shadow step with the hemorrhage going the dagger version i love using backstab i like the positional requirements i like the challenge it poses even if it is frustrating sometimes and then some assassination talents just going for as much damage as possible that's what's fun for me but we are so close to level 70, man. Like, this video has been such a long undertaking for me, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far. But still a little bit of ways to go, so uh, let's get on it. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. there you go guys 1000 lifetime kills on this fresh character all of which came from world pvp i'm pretty proud of that it also lets you know what i've actually been doing as i've been playing i really do play just to have fun not just as a job right and i mean that not in the youtube sense but in like the 
grinding and treating WoW like a second job sense. Anyway, like I said, 1000 lifetime world PvP kills, that's pretty awesome. So what I can say is that subtlety PvP is obviously the best. Just by playing it, I can tell. The damage is there, the utility is there, prep is crazy, shadow step is obviously crazy, and it does kind of suck because it does make you feel like you can't do anything else, but that's kind of the theme with Classic and TBC in the earlier expansions is that, you know, certain specs were good at certain things. You couldn't do everything with every spec, so what I'm going to have to get used to is when I want to PvE, I need to make sure I have enough gold to spec change into combat, and I need two 1H weapons that work with that. On the flip side, when I want to PvP, I'm probably my default spec, I'm gonna have to be in sub and use the shadow step and all that, but I am happy that I was able to try mutilate, you know, at a time in which it was a little bit better, which is when I was leveling, uh, instead of being somebody who never really got to try it at all. So I've been running a whole lot of Black Morass right now. I got both of the best drops I could get from the dungeon, pretty good ones in fact, the trinket is Prebis, I guess you could call it, right? Uh, it's the Hourglass of the Unraveler. Really freaking good. A massive amount of crit. I got 2% crit off this trinket and a really amazing chance on hit for around 300 attack power. And then we got the Hand Grips of Assassination, which is pretty interesting, specifically because what I'm trying to do is go for the four piece. Now, the four piece is what I like about the Assassination set. I know that there's a better set that I can get from Heroics, but this one specifically will allow me to reduce the energy cost of Eviscerate or Envenom by 10. What that's going to allow me to do is go for very similar combos with Relentless Strikes that I can only currently get with things like Kidney Shot or Slice and Dice or Rupture, where because they cost 25 energy, if I use them on 5 combo points with Relentless Strikes talented, it's as if I never had to spend any energy on it at all. So I can't do that naturally with Eviscerate or even the Envenom. But like I said, the set bonus is good because it allows me to do that. I think that could be fun. And it's just something I want to try. It's the set of assassination. That's pretty sick But I am currently 5,700 out of 21,000 reputation revered with keepers of time going for exalted going for the dagger I talked about earlier, so I don't know how long it's gonna take me. I think about 12 runs So let's go for it Okay guys, taking a quick break from my reputation grind with Keepers of Time, and I'm gonna go for some professions, so I do want to get my mining all the way up to max, specifically so I can get my hands on some pretty sick goggles. Now, I'm not saying they're the best goggles in the world, but what I am saying is that they're pretty freaking good, and they look amazing. I cannot wait for the aesthetic of having these goggles. So, we have to get all the way to 370 engineering. We already have the primal nether for it, so the rest of the required ingredients should be rather easy to obtain. With that in mind, my mining level is currently around 225 at least by the end of all of this, and that's quite decent. Getting it up to 300 and getting into Outland stuff is going to be quite easy to do, and I'll be able to pick up some Fell Iron Nodes and other things fairly easily when I go back to Outland, as I do know the general area of where to farm these nodes, and I think a lot of people are done with their personal grind, and so it's going to be a little bit easier for me this far into the expansion. You know, beginning to end, this has been a really long journey, but I'm definitely enjoying it. We did actually reach 14,000 out of 21,000 reputation with Keepers of Time, putting me exactly two-thirds of the way to Exalted, so we're making amazing progress. I'm loving the character. I really can't wait for that goggle aesthetic, so let's get back on the grind, guys. Okay, guys, so I am currently two runs away two, including this one, so one more run away from Exalted with Keepers of Time, and I do have the gold for the dagger, so I'm excited about that. What I will say is, you can look at my group, and there's another rogue, and that's been a very common thing, even when I'm not playing with my friend, there are a lot of rogues. If you go to LFG Bulletin Board, you immediately see, look, three rogues looking for a group, looking for more for a group. They are all going for Exalted with Keepers of Time, and it's getting harder and harder so I'm happy to finally be done with it because nobody wants a rogue in their group. Let's just be real right now, especially when a lot of us are like me playing sub. But what I've noticed, and you can see from the DPS down here, it might not be the best DPS, but if you do the best you can with it, you can at least hold your own and not be completely useless. I think the issue is that a below average rogue in PvE is basically the worst that it gets. But if you're at least average, or if you are above average, it's not that bad to have a rogue in your group, but it is always better to have something else. Except when you need things lockpicked. <laughs> 
And even then, can you not just have a blacksmith? Actually, it appears to be that you can't. It looks like they skipped that functionality in TBC and then re-added it with Wrath. But anyway, guys, like I said, two more runs. Let's get exalted. So after copious amounts of Black Morass runs, which were honestly pretty chill and not that bad, even as a sub rogue, I finally was able to pull out the exalted reputation. It was a pretty easy grind, not gonna lie, about 1200 reputation per normal dungeon, 1900 per heroic, but we were only doing normals. We weren't even level 70 yet. Fun fact, hit exalted before I hit 70 with Keepers of Time. I will definitely take that. Can't even use the dagger at the time of hitting exalted, but nonetheless, I think that overall, it was a pretty good investment. I'm going to use the dagger for a while. I'm going to switch back to mutilate, I think, and it's going to be a load of fun. My DPS was never anything impressive, but I've taught myself to be okay with that as a rogue in PvE in the Burning Crusade. It's not a big deal. Uh, the pay off for being as good as we are in PvP is definitely worth it, but I am going to go to Mutilate, I think, and try to play around with that as well, just to do something different. And here you go, guys! Let's go ahead and get the Rift Maker. This is pretty amazing, guys. Massive upgrade right here. Only 160 gold. Okay, guys, it's been a long time coming, but I think we finally done it. Let's go ahead and grab level 70. There we go. That feels good. Level 70 means I can finally put on my Rift Maker, man. This is sick. This is a major upgrade over my Wastewalker Shiv, man, all the way from the beginning of the episode, which is like 30 minutes ago for you, but like three weeks ago for me. So, um, you know what? It is what it is. Rift Maker, let's pop you on. Oh, yes, dude! Massive, massive upgrade. 1.8 speed dagger. That's nice. And closes the enemy in a temporal rift, increasing the time between their attacks by 10%, increases AP by 22, and agility by 21. So, if if you look at my damage and my AP, I'm at 1239 AP with it, I'm at 1219 without, so plus 20. But look at the damage high end, that's the main thing, 287 with what I had before. The Rift Maker brings it up all the way to 336. Now all we have to do is switch back to Mutilate, I'm gonna go with a more PvE centric build this time, and we are gonna be set with our Rift Maker. I think lower city reputation might be something we go for now, but I definitely have more of a dungeon grind ahead of me, and I'm really excited guys but okay guys that is actually going to be the end of episode one it took me a really long time to get here it will not take this long for episode two if you guys do want that by the way make sure to give this video a like and to subscribe leave a comment in the comment section below let me know what you thought of the video it's a long one it's my whole journey i put a lot of love into it because i love this character i'm really enjoying tbc classic so i hope you guys want to continue to watch the journey lots more pvp to come more progression just trying to make my character as good as i possibly can get all the cool stuff i can possibly get and we've got a lot of stuff to do i mean we don't even have flying yet guys so anyway if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to give it a like and to subscribe like i said but i will see you guys in the next video mcdoubles out